Welcome back once again to Ubuntu 19.10 open season. And today we're looking at the KDE spin of Ubuntu 19.10, Kubuntu. And uh, I guess it goes without saying that this release is a bit unfortunately timed in that the KDE Plasma desktop recently got bumped to KDE Plasma 5.17. And yet on Kubuntu 19.10, it comes out with 5.16. So luckily for us, the headline that you need to know is that if you want the latest goodies from the Plasma desktop, you need to do one of two things. First, if you want the latest goodies on an LTS base, just go and get KDE Neon. Save you the time of watching this video. Go and watch a video about Plasma 5.17 and download KDE Neon. You'll be fine. It'll be great. You'll love it. If on the other hand, you want the latest kernel, the latest hardware drivers, and the spit and polish that has been added uh, on the performance end underneath Ubuntu 19.10 across all the flavors, if you've got more up-to-date hardware, you're going to want 19.10. And you're gonna want Kubuntu 19.10 if you're a fan of Plasma. And you're gonna wanna enable the Kubuntu Backports PPA to get the latest Plasma goodies, 5.17. That is a lengthy intro, and I am going to be discussing both 5.16 and 5.17 in Kubuntu 19.10 review, so let's give it a whirl. Okay, so here's how it, here's how it breaks down. It was, like I said, just some unfortunate timing on behalf of the, of the KDE desktop that led to uh, Kubuntu's release coming out just a smidgen before the 5.17 Plasma release came out. But never to fear, you can simply enable the Backports PPA on Kubuntu and get the latest goodies. So this desktop that you are looking at right now is running the absolute latest KDE Plasma version 5.17.1. And you can see KDE Frameworks, the Qt version and the kernel all there ready to roll. And, uh, and the other thing that I do want to point out is the fact that out of the box, my goodness, KDE Plasma these days is so lightweight. If you haven't checked out Jason Evangelo's uh, article on how lightweight Plasma is by now, I'll chuck it in the link in the description. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty exciting stuff. But even with a few things running, let's have a look at just how much RAM we're using. So we're sitting at about 1200 meg of RAM. What I noticed was on a cold boot with absolutely nothing loaded in at memory, uh, it was sitting around 550 meg of RAM. Now obviously it scales up pretty quick. This is Plasma that we're talking about. Plasma is feature rich, so rich. Like it's, it's like a really tasty sauce. It's that rich. And uh, so I'm gonna talk about the features that come with Kubuntu 19.10 out of the box. Uh, and then I will pivot to talk about what comes in the 5.17 release because I haven't talked about anything KDE related in quite some time. Here we go. So first of all, uh, I want to direct your attention down to the notification tray down in the bottom here. Uh, this area has undergone like a lot of refinement over the last few releases. And as of KDE, uh, as of Plasma 5.16, it got a do not disturb feature for the notification tray. Now. Uh, basically, when you have a look at the notifications here, they are broken down usually by category. Now, obviously I don't have any notifications coming in, so it's a bit hard to see, but in 5.16, they introduced a very simple do not disturb mode that you could customize uh, to the nth degree like you can with most, uh, with most parts of the Plasma desktop. Also down in the taskbar, you will get a privacy warning now if you have a, uh, if you have an app that is attempting to use your camera. So for example, if I jump into a video chat room where it wants to access my camera and uh, my microphone, then uh, KDE will actually have a little indicator down the bottom here to say that an app is trying to access those things. Also, the login screen has been updated with some really nice visual polish. So for example, if I log out here, then you'll see that that smooth, that smooth fade is just so delicious. I can log out and then the login manager will, uh, will appear with uh, basically some really polished icons, some really smooth fades, nice animations, etc. Lots of things to love there. Now, the other improvement that they've made to the desktop that's uh, just a nice functional tweak is that apparently nowadays you can have a slideshow of your favorite images 
uh, but out of the box with Plasma. You used to have to do a little bit of tweaking to make that happen. Nowadays, you can just direct it at a folder and it will go through all of those, uh, all of those wallpapers one by one. Also, just want to say that some of the wallpapers that they include in, uh, in the Plasma desktop by default these days are so nice. And it's great to see that the wallpapers from past uh, KDE releases are also here as well. Bit of a trip down memory lane for, for some of us. Now, the other nice little tweak that they've made is that when you are in the panel edit mode, you will have a show alternatives button so that if you want to uh, be able to see what other menu launches are available, basically it just gives you the option to switch out a particular widget for something that achieves the same level of functionality without having to dig through absolutely all of the widgets that are available uh, in Plasma Desktop. So you'll notice here that you've got a huge list of widgets that you can choose from, whereas simply just hitting the Show Alternatives button will give you an idea of uh, which ones are suitable for swapping out uh, while retaining some of the functionality there. Okay, so really, in terms of the Plasma Desktop 5.16, that's about it. And then you get, of course, all the changes that, that are standard across the Ubuntu release cycle. So you get latest kernel 5.3. You get NVIDIA um, drivers included on the ISO so that you do not need an internet connection to have uh, NVIDIA drivers out of the box. And yeah, that's kind of about it. Performance is very good, but here's where I pivot to talking about 5.17. So, like I said at the top of the video, I went ahead and enabled the PPA, got Plasma 5.17, and that's what I'm playing around with now. So, when it comes to what improvements have been made here, <clears throat> there are a few key things. First of all, the uh, the login script of uh, basically that splash screen that um, that you get with the KDE desktop, that's been, uh, a lot of those scripts have been rewritten in C++, meaning that you get much faster uh, splash screen login time than what you used to. I did it before, but just notice how quick this is compared to what it once was. Uh, you used to have to wait to see sequentially one by one, whereas now because they're rewritten, they can happen at the same time and it just speeds up the process immensely. The other thing that I really, really like is that now there is fractional scaling support uh, on Wayland. Wayland obviously being a more modern display server, it is still not very well supported, especially with the proprietary NVIDIA drivers, but if you are running Wayland on, let's say, an Intel-based graphics card, you now get fractional scaling across the desktop. So if you have a 4K display or an, another high pixel density display on a laptop or something like that, you can adjust how much the scaling uh, is affecting the desktop which I think is just rad. So let's jump back to notifications for a second and talk about do not disturb mode in 5.17. Uh, so the do not disturb mode that you can get now is it will actually be affected by multi-monitor setup. So for example, if you're plugged into a projector and you don't want notifications popping up while you're giving a presentation, it will intelligently and automatically uh, disable notifications and put it in do not disturb mode, which is a nice tweak. Some other really nice usability tweaks that they've made is around the taskbar and what behavior middle clicking does. So let's say for example, I've got a few windows open here and uh, let's say for example, I wanna have multiple file managers open. Instead of going back to the menu and opening another instance of the file manager, I can very easily just middle click on the file managers instance in the taskbar and it will open up a, another instance of that application, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and then also on the flip side, simply by middle clicking the preview of that window on the taskbar closes the uh, the window. So yeah, really quick, just a little tweak there that's been made. It's a nice little usability tweak. Now, this is worth mentioning in that, as you can see down in the bottom right corner, we have a system monitor closed unexpectedly. So what I do wanna say is that if you are gonna enable the, the Kubuntu Backports PPA to get the latest version of KDE Plasma, then uh, you will take a little bit of a hit in stability. Now, again, common theme through all of these Ubuntu 19.10 releases is that I'm really excited for the 20.04 release because uh, chances are that will have the Plasma Desktop 5.18, which is also a long-term support release. So there's a lot to be excited about there. Can we all just take a moment to quickly appreciate how much the, uh, the system settings have been cleaned up over the last few uh, releases of Plasma? Things look so much cleaner now and, uh, and make so much more sense when you're navigating through menus and layouts. And there's so much less wasted white space compared to what there was. It's not perfect, but it's so much better than what it was. One thing that I would love to see is in the global themes section, something I'd love to see in Plasma would be to, uh, to have 
different themes and layouts that are attached to those themes. So for example, if you quickly wanted to re-lay out your desktop, very similar to how GNOME works or how something with a global menu or something like that, then it would be fantastic to be able to really quickly enable those and uh, and see it happen. Um, so some of the other stuff that is uh, being added to Plasma 5.17 is night color. Very simple, it's just the, that red shift thing that it's very trendy for desktop operating systems to do. It is what it is, you can activate that if you want it. By default, it is turned off. Also, when you're looking at the login um, settings and the settings for the SDDM login manager, um, it will actually now automatically adapt to whatever fonts, background, and theming that you have on the desktop as well, just to make everything look a little bit more personalized and, uh, and coherent, which is nice. One other little tweak that they have made, and I'm not sure whether or not it'll show up, I'll be interested to see. Um, you ha actually have an option now to suspend the session and on particular laptops that have a cache file enabled, you can actually set it to suspend for a few hours and then hibernate after that to save uh, battery life which I think is is pretty cool. Now, apparently when it comes to theming, the, the Breeze GTK theme, so for example, any GTK apps that are, that are trying to emulate the Breeze theme will now respect the color choices that you make. So if you have a custom color setup here uh, in Plasma settings, then uh, the GTK Breeze theme will respect those color choices that you have made. There's a few other bits and bobs here and there, including a little bit of visual polish and feedback regarding the uh, progress bars and uh, and loading, um, loading spinning things inside the uh, Discover Software Center. So it looks just a little bit neater and cleaner now. And the Breeze theme as a whole looks a little bit flatter and, uh, and a little bit more just in line with, I guess, modern design trends uh, overall. Oh, and one more thing that I need to mention because it's awesome is that you can now uh, convert, uh, do smart conversions up here in KRunner or in the menu, which is also really nice. It's just more functionality built into an already busting at the gills uh, desktop environment. So uh, yeah, long story short, a few crashes along the way. Uh, it's 5.17, which is a, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of rocky ground on Kubuntu 19.10. 5.16 though, you shouldn't have any issues because it's been tested pretty thoroughly. And uh, like I said, if you want the latest plasma, but on a stable base, just go get KDE Neon and you'll be happy. That'll be all from me. Uh, we will soldier on and we're looking forward to the Fedora 31 release coming very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Uh, leave me a comment. What is the chosen base for you when it comes to the KDE Plasma desktop? What is the distro that you like to run Plasma on the most? Kubuntu is a bit up in the air for me. I don't really, it's, uh, it's nice, but I feel like there might be better options out there. Anyway, let me know what you think. Peace out. I'll see you in the next video.